Hey guys, Liam here with three bits of tasty info for you today. We have a Steam Deck beta update, that's pretty good, and two different Proton updates, so let's dive in. Firstly, the new Steam Deck client beta update makes some big improvements to the on-screen keyboard, especially for the desktop mode. What they've done is they've improved the responsiveness of the on-screen keyboard, they fixed missing keystrokes when touch typing in desktop mode, and they fixed the on-screen keyboard text entry dialogue sometimes having buttons cut off. For Steam input, they fixed an issue where command settings would not save, and they fixed an issue where mouse edge spin would be more sensitive on the left side of the trackpad than the right. And for remote play, they fixed a crashing issue when streaming from one Steam Deck to another. Now, here's a look at just how responsive the on-screen keyboard actually is in desktop mode. Before this update, I would have to do it pretty slowly to watch out for missed keys and sometimes hit them two or three times. Now though, I can just bring it up, tap away, and it's looking really, really good now, and so it's properly usable. Next up, we have a Proton Experimental update from September 20th that has these fixes. There is a fix for black texture issues in beamng.drive. Upside down videos in VRChat and many other games have been fixed. There's a fix for Call of Duty Black Ops 2 zombies and multiplayer hanging on exit. And a fix for the bail or jail demo crashing when opening the terms of service. Additionally, for desktop Linux users on NVIDIA, Proton Experimental now has enabled NV API for a ton of games. Enabling the NV API means that NVIDIA GPU users will be able to access things like DLSS without needing any workarounds. And they have enabled it for quite a lot of titles including A Medieval, The Ascent, Chorus, Cyberpunk 2077, Death Stranding, Death Loop, Deep Rock Galactic, Dying Light 2, Ghost Runner, Hitman 3, Spider-Man Remastered, No Man's Sky, and the list goes on. That's actually quite a big change, and especially considering at some point they are going to release SteamOS for everyone, it's important that they get things like this sorted, because obviously not everyone is on an AMD GPU. Additionally, for those of you who use GE Proton, the community-built version that has various extra fixes and at times can run games that the official Proton cannot. There's a new version of this out too, which has some fixes for Fantasy Star Online 2, Persona 4 Golden, GTA 4 Custom Radio, Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Multiplayer and Zombies, Sword and Fairy 4, and it also updates the latest Wine, DXVK and VKD3D to all the latest work, so you might find performance is again perhaps better. But as always, GE Proton has far less quality assurance than the official Proton, so it can come with its own set of issues. As always, all source links will be in the description. I don't like you having to go and hunt them down. That's all for now though. Thank you for following along and I will see you next time.